Greetings, Save Rights. Nam is here. We had a little discussion on the uh, uh, forum on Facebook the other day after a cartoon, um, which uh, mentioned something or was joking about something which comes up a lot in uh, sword circles and stuff like that, and that's how to properly grip a sword um, if, um, or how to draw um, a warrior or something like that gripping a sword and has a bunch of different ways to do it. And so it got us kind of talking about what is the correct way to grip a sword and all that. Now, we have put out a video before saying that most of grip is, is very, very personal and it's wherever you want to be. Um, that's true. Uh, what I will go into this video is the kind of characteristics of all the types of grips and how your grip actually works to kind of show that it's, it's really, really changeable and you just have to know what the dynamics of each position and each, each type of holding it is. Um, there aren't a lot of things which are just flat out wrong because our weapon is going to be moving you know, a lot in, in this plane here. Um, the one thing we don't want to do, of course, is let go um, <clears throat> here. Now, of course, if we're moving into things where I'm letting go to get a little bit of reach or for one-handed or something like that. That's, that. that's a different story. But we don't want to let go when we're not really letting go of the saber. We always want to keep it here. Um, now the next bit, <clears throat> once we've got a, a nice kind of reactive grip and you see here, like a lot of people say that the hammer grip is wrong. It's not necessarily wrong. We'll get into that in a second. Um, but it's not necessarily going to be the position that you're going to find yourself in the most because you're going to be wanting to move your hand like this. And notice that I can go smoothly into these grips. And you see I have that little space there okay, as I move here because my fingers move along with it. So this grip and this grip can easily be transitioned into um, just by the, the angle of your fingers. Now, <clears throat> one of the, 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 the positions that we were talking about is we never want to grip, especially with two, well, with two hands, the saber like this or here like this with our hands shoved up together like this, okay? Now, <clears throat> saying never is a dangerous prospect, of course, because sometimes there may be a reason for this. Um, now, the reason that we don't want to favor a position like this is because our hands are now tightly pressed together. And that movement that you saw in my fingers before through my grip now is almost non-existent. I have to really kind of reposition my hand. But if I reposition my hands, I'm out of that grip. So I don't want to get it like this. Now, they call it the baseball grip. Or the baseball bat grip because people generally grip the bat down there and the reason they do is because they're trying to get a lot of stiffness or stability into the wrists and the hands so that it can impart more force to the target in, in the case of a baseball bat ball right we do the same thing so at times it's to get a really good strike or really hard you know wallop we bring it in here like this and we can do this. So sometimes it's all right for cutting, right? Because I can do that. I can, I can guarantee I have a little bit more stiffness or a little bit more support in my wrists so that when it hits the target, it's gonna be less give, less force being dissipated out. It's gonna make a better cut. Um, however, am I gonna use that to cut in free play? Probably not. And the reason is, is because what I, gain in support and power. I lose in mobility. And that's the most important thing. There's an inverse relationship between stability and mobility. The more stable something is, the less mobile it is. And the more mobile it is, the less stable it is. And we want to try to find a nice middle ground that we can swing back and forth in there. We don't want to commit overly to any one side. Right? Now, that requires us to have our hands apart a little bit so that we can get leverage, we can change our grip, we can, we can move into these positions here very easily. Okay? Now there's debate on how far up or how far down. And again, that's personal preference. 
you're probably going to be moving it through through this. And uh, one of the things to mention is that lightsaber hilts are pretty long, so it's advantageous to use as much leverage as you can. Now, I tend to like to have my hand hanging off. Some people like to have their hand on the entire hilt. All right? Either way is fine. Okay. <clears throat> With the hand on the entire hilt, you might have to move it a little bit more as you come around. So you can't immediately move into pushes and stuff like that. And moving it around like that might become a little bit more difficult, but really there's there's not a really a much gained or given up in either of those. Um, <clears throat> so there's that. Okay, you get superior leverage here, you can move quicker, all of that, even though it may seem like you can move quicker with this because you have a smaller, full, uh, smaller point of rotation and it feels like it's more reactive because I just do that and it twitches and it, and it will, it'll go into that because of that pressing together of the hands, okay? Um, now in actual swords, you, you, you don't want to do that either. And I'll show you here. <clears throat> so here, again, I usually grip it by the pommel, have a little bit off. Some people even do it even more. Some people like to grab like there. Either way, you see there's a little bit of space in the hands. Even if I bring it up to where they're kind of touching, they're not crammed together, right? Okay, so this is not a very, very long handle. If we look at the difference in length between them, the lightsaber is considerably longer. And in fact, if we look at a initiate, an Ultra Saber's initiate, which is about as short as they come, you see you're not dealing with a whole lot more um, handle the sword. Okay? So in historical weapons, right, there's going to be, depending on the length of the handle, more or less in there. Um, but generally speaking, they would usually the handle is in some relation to uh, the balance of the weapon. <clears throat> um, so there. Now, keeping your hands apart like this, whether it be just a little bit or even just loosely apart, is advantageous because it allows us to move freely and then when we want to, create a lot of force and a lot of uh, strength like that. Okay, so when we, we come in here, I can be loose, and then when I strike, I can choke up on it, I can squeeze the handle, wring it, pull it apart for that instant as I come through right here, right? And then I release it, right? Okay, so the idea is that I'm relaxed throughout the whole thing except for the moment that I hit the target. Right? And you see, my hands will be probably in something approximately, approximating that grip, or approximately this grip. Right? Um, if I hit more with the tip, of course, it's going to be like this, but if I'm really chopping through something, I want more of this. Now, as soon as I go through there, then I loosen back up. And again, that's another added um, advantage to having your hands a little bit apart because you can change the point of rotation through the handle, through the blade, all that kind of thing, and you can go around your other hand, right, and arm, and clothing, and armor, and, and what have you, um, to uh, better position and all that, yet still be able to, if need be, just choke up on it real quick, and then bring your hand back down again. Um, so that's really the, the, the major um, issues with uh, gripping the sword. So, um, to review, how are we going to hold the sword? We're going, or hold, hold our saber, is we're going to hold it firmly but, re but relaxed, so we're not choking on it and we're not squeezing it too hard, right? And so that we can move it around. We're going to keep our hands a little bit apart, but um, they can come together, it de depends on your comfort level. Even if they are together, you keep them loose, right? So that you can still move, maneuver around there. Um, 
So the name of the game is changing. Remember, if we cram our hands together, go like this, it's very difficult to change. And changing is what we need to be able to do when we're going up against people who we don't know what's coming at us um, in, in free play and stuff like that. So there you go, a, another little tip on um, holding the saber. Uh, hopefully you will find that uh, helpful. Um, if you find yourself dropping your saber a lot in, in a lot of things, uh, try to focus on these kind of issues, on, on keeping that grip there and going through and, and using it more like a lever and less, less like a hammer. Um, okay, all right. So until next time, patience, practice, perseverance. Happy sacred.